Halleluja. What a blessing to be together. Pastor Philip is in, um, in preaching at uh, Shofar in Polokwane this morning. And uh, they are praying for Dylan and his wife that, are, that have started as pastors there at the beginning of the year. And um, so, yeah, he's, he's joining them today. Um, great. Yeah, as I was kind of going through my message again, I realized I have a lot that I want to share. So, um, yeah, a lot of the, lot of scripture. <laughs> so, hallelujah. Well, maybe we'll rush through the scriptures and you can recap them again at home. Just make notes, okay? Um, and, um, yeah, so when was it? Last night or the night before... Emily and I, she was reading about Jesus calming the storm. And then we had a chat about it. And I said to her, so what did you learn? And she said that we don't have to be afraid if Jesus, if Jesus is with us. And I said, so what are the things that sometimes make you worried or afraid? You know, stuff you have to ask a seven-year-old from time to time. And, uh, and uh, I, I, you never know what's going to come out. So, <laughs> so she says... Sometimes when, when daddy is, is working at church late in, at, at night, then she gets worried. It's like, oh, that's not nice. And it, <laughs> you know, often, that's unfortunately one of the things about ministry. Sometimes you work late at night. So, so we chatted about it. And I, and the, but it was so cool for her that she could put these things together, that, that Jesus, just the way that he calms the storm, just the way that he is there in the boat, with the disciples, even though they are worried, they were conf- they were b- scared that they were that something bad was going to happen, and we had a great chat about that. And she could, I could see she gets that that Jesus is there, and that even when I'm away or when Anna's away, that that she can still experience that peace of knowing that He is the one that calms the storm. Amen. <laughs> he is the one that that. The winds and the waves, they still obey Him. Amen. Um, the, God, the truth is, guys, we're living in a tumult, tumultuous, in tumultuous times. Amen. We're living in hectic times. And, uh, and I was so challenged this week again that um, if we, you know, I had a chat with somebody that was away for a bit, was overseas for a bit, and they back. And f- and they were just chatting about how how in your face the challenges of our nation are if you've been away. I suppose it depends where you go. Okay, he wasn't in a war zone. He was in a first world country. So yeah, <laughs> so from coming back from a first world country, for being there for a couple of weeks, then you come back. He says it's just really in your face all the the challenges and the realities and the hectic things facing our nation, and you know the, the story about the the frog in the in the kettle. How does it go? Anyways, but uh, it, it's as if if because we're in it, we kind of just adjust. We go on. We make things work. Type of thing, uh, which is not a bad thing in this context. But but he was just saying he's so challenged with the realities that we are facing and the challenges of the econ- economy. Um, you know, so many ways that we are experiencing pressure in different ways. And I want us to look at it a little bit of how do, we, how do we process that in a godly way, you know, in the context of what we've been chatting about the last couple of weeks, in the context of the purpose of God, in the context of us living outward focused lives, how do we process the realities we are living in? Amen. Are, we, are, we with, are you with me? So we're going to read a bunch of scriptures. So please excuse me. Some of them just note down. Let's start with Psalm 22. So we can, you know, there's a bunch of times in the, in the scripture where people feel like we feel right now. Okay? Or so sometimes we feel like this. So maybe just let's, let's read what David says here. I have picked out a couple of these verses here. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why are you so far away when I groan for help? Every day I call to you, my God, but you do not answer. Every night I lift my voice, but I find no relief. And then he goes on in a few verses later. He says, but I'm a worm and not a man. Okay, he's, he's, he's not in a good space. All right, he's not in a good space, yeah. 
<laughs> I'm a woman, not a man. I'm scorned and despised by all. Everyone who sees me mocks me. They sneer and shake their heads, saying, This is the one who relies on the Lord. Is this, is this the one who relies on the Lord? Then let the Lord save him. If the Lord loves him so much, let the Lord rescue him. Yet you brought me, but then he says, At least, yet you brought me safely from my mother's womb and led me to trust, uh, led me to trust you at my mother's breast. I was thrust into your arms at my birth. You have been my God from the moment I was born. Do not stay so far from me, for trouble is near and no one else can help me. Okay, so he's not in a great space. All right, so um, maybe when we read the news, we feel like this. And then Psalm, um, okay, let's go on. Yeah, verse 12, my enemies surround me like a herd of bulls. Fierce bulls of Bashan have hemmed me in. Like lions, they, they open their jaws against me, roaring and tearing into their prey. Good, not a good space. My life is poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. That's no good. Um, my heart is like wax melting within me. My strength is dried up like sun-baked clay. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You have laid me in the dust and left me for dead. <laughs> okay. My enemies surrounded me, surround me like a pack of dogs. An evil gang closes in on me. They have pierced my hands and feet. This is a reference to Christ as well. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. This is how thin he is. My enemies stare at me and gloat. They divide my garments among themselves and throw dice for my clothing. That's also a reference to Christ. But, but this guy is not in a good space. Okay. So yes, sometimes it feels like this. Um, but make, do yourself a favor and go read the Psalms before and the Psalms after to see, to see how, how David pulls himself up, <laughs> speaks to his soul and says, be still my soul. He, he says, this is the reality, this is how I feel, but I will hope in God. So do yourself a favor and go read through that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on to uh, 2 Corinthians, which Sam, um, ministering the other day, also mentioned. <clears throat> um, before we read that, Okay, no worry. It's really right now. But we feel like this. We afflicted. Okay, we feel crushed. We feel perplexed. We are driven. Feel di driven to despair. We we feel persecuted. We feel struck down, etc. But let's just read this. But uh, um, from verse eight, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persuaded, pers persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus. Why? So that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always being given over to, the, to death for Jesus' sake. So that the life of Jesus may be manifest, also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so also speak. You can look at the power of what we're speaking in a moment. Knowing that he who raised Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. That's powerful. Bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Amen. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. <coughs> I can see that so powerfully in my friend's life now. He's, he's gone through such a hectic time the last couple of years circumstances everything you can imagine and this is so powerful now because he the circumstances are are not so much different now but because of he's now born again he's just completely differently approaching everything and he's experiencing the power of god in such an amazing way let's go on so um so yes this these are the realities these are the challenges, there's so many things around us that seem to uh, come against us. And, this, and, 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 I've, and I've, if, we, if we, you know, we chat with guys at work or in our community or, you know, there at the sports field, at the school where your kids are, or people when you engage with our community, communities, often the negative stuff is easier to talk about, right? The stuff that 
we are hopeless about or the things that are going wrong or the the reason why you know i don't know it's just easy to to speak negative things that's just, maybe it's just me but i've noticed this right and i just want to hold before us this morning as believers are we believers in this place this morning there's one or two okay great yes we are believers so let's just stop for a moment and in the midst of the chaos that we are living in um in various levels <laughs> let's look at who is it that we are believing in who is it that we are believing in in the midst of all of this and i want to go run through a whole bunch of scriptures and then i'm going to um, come to something really important that i want us to look at at the end all right who is this Jesus in whom we trust and whom we believe? We are believers. Amen. What is, the, what is the implication of us calling ourselves believers? Who is this Jesus in whom we trust? John 8 verse 12 says, Again Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And when it feels like we are walking in, in darkness, and more than ways than one, and when it feels this is so crucial that we realize that the one we are following is the light. Amen. We, can, we will not be in darkness. We will not be in despair. We will not be walking in that negativity if we are following him. Um, if he will, we will have a light of life. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Next one. So a bunch of these. Okay, so hang, hang with me. <coughs> Psalm 62, he alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress where I will never be shaken. He alone is my rock and my salvation. There's not a lot of other things that we can rely on. Amen? But we can rely on him as our rock and our salvation. He is the fortress, the safe place that we are, we are secure and safe in. We are the place. He is the place. He is the, the person where we can feel safe and secure, and we can, will not be shaken. Um, you'll, you'll catch where I'm going uh, when I, so just go through all of these with me. Psalm 28, verse 7. <clears throat> the Lord is my strength and my shield. In Him my heart trusts, and I am helped. My heart exalts, and with my song I give thanks to Him. Amen. Second Corinthians 12. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should be that it should leave me. So he's talking about Paul, talking about this challenges, these afflictions coming against him. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I'm content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Okay, let's just recap. What is he content with, Paul? Content, that's a big word, guys, being, us being content with where we are. He says, I am therefore, <clears throat> for the sake of Christ, then, not for my sake, for the sake of Christ, then I am content with weaknesses, content with insults. That doesn't make any sense. How can you be content with people insulting you? <laughs> I, I'm content with weaknesses. I'm content with insults. I'm content with hardships. I'm content with persecutions and calamities. That's a sermon all on its own. Tick, tick. Okay, so he's saying, he's come to the place where he realizes that because the power of Christ is manifested when he is not doing so great, when he is in himself weak, he says he's become content when he has to face these things because the power of Christ is manifested. Isn't that amazing? But content means that he, he's not throwing his toys around he's not throwing a tantrum he's not depressed amen he's not in despair he's content when facing hardships he's content when facing calamities he's content when he's being insulted and persecuted 
for when I'm weak, then I am strong. Hallelujah. <coughs> okay, we'll preach on that one another time. Again, then Isaiah 40. Who is, who, again, who is this Christ that we trust in? <coughs> now, he helps us out a bit here. Verse 25. To whom will you compare me? Who is my equal? Asks the Holy One. Look up into the heavens. Who created all the stars? Pause. The other day, you know when they had that super blue moon thing, super full moon with Saturn right next to it? Yes, we managed to see Saturn and that it's just, it just blows your mind. When you see the rings and everything, we pulled out the telescope that we got on OLX a while ago and uh, <laughs> it's just amazing. And But it just blows your mind. There's something about seeing the creation of God that helps us to worship Him. Amen? <coughs> Who created all the stars? He brings them out like an army, one after another, calling each by its name. Because of his great power and incomparable strength, not a single one is missing. Oh, Jacob, how can you say the Lord does not see your troubles? Put your own name in there. <laughs> oh, Yaku, how can you say the Lord? There's only one letter there. It's easy for me. How can you say the Lord does not see your troubles? O Israel, how can you say God ignores your rights? Have you not heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired, and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Hallelujah. Let's go on. <clears throat> okay, so just a few yeah, extra ones for free. Uh, he comforts those who mourn. Who mourn. Amen. He establishes our paths and directs our steps. He does not leave us in despair. He does not leave us clueless. When we seek His face, He directs our steps according to His will and His purpose. Amen. I just feel there's somebody that's been wrestling with God about direction. Just get your heart to be quiet before Him. He will direct your steps. Amen. He makes a way where there seems to be way, no way. The scripture there talks about rivers in the desert. He makes a way where they cannot, when you cannot see a way. He gives strength to the weary, increases the power of the weak, as we just read. And he provides everything we need, an abundance for every good work. And guys, if if the uh, you know, if, if in my life I've had one or two, you know those but God moments that we've uh, preached about that a while ago? But God. You know, everything went pear-shaped and the wheels came off. But God, right? If I had two of those or three or ten in my life, maybe I would, could write them off to coincidence or something else. But because I have so many, I cannot. I cannot, I mean... And I believe every one of us here as believers can look back on our lives and say, look at the but God moments. If it was not for Him, I will not be standing here right now. If it was not for His grace. So those but God moments are all over our lives. Those monuments of His goodness and those monuments of His faithfulness and those moments where we where we know that this is not something I read in a book. This is not something that's, uh, it, it's not a, an intellectual thing for me, but this is someone I've met, someone that I've seen, the power of God that I've seen in my life to such an extent that I cannot deny that He is alive. And that everything that we've read now is true. Amen. And this is the reality. F and for who, we, where we are and where we're at. He is the one that gives us strength when we are weak. He is the one that calms the storm. He is the one that is with us in the fire. 
that sometimes he doesn't extinguish the fire. Sometimes he doesn't take us around. But he is the fourth in the fire with, with, with Daniel's friends. Amen. He is with us right there in the worst place. He is the one that he doesn't kill the lions. He doesn't take us out of the lion pit like with Daniel. He doesn't drug the lions. He sends an angel to close the mouths of the lions. The lions are still there. They can still make noise and stuff. They can still scare you. But he closes the mouths of the lions. Amen. He's, that's them. That's who he is. He's the one that sometimes we feel he's late. Jairus' daughter, um, Lazarus, he was late, all right? They're already dead. And then he raises to life again when we feel it's too late already. This thing is already dead. This hope that I have in my heart, this thing that I'm challenged, this challenge I'm facing, it's beyond saving. But he raises it from the dead. He raises from the dead what, what f we feel is beyond saving. Are you with me? And now, I, what I want to, the point I want to get to is, you know, I want a conversation that I had a couple of times the last few months and years. You know, you chat to somebody, maybe a believer that is at our for a parent at our school where our kids are, maybe someone in congregation. You talk about the stuff that we face. We talk about difficulties in life and marriage and work and stuff, and then we say to each other, "This is so hectic. How is it possible?" To face all these things if you're not a believer. Have you ever, you've had that conversation. You, you wrestle through these things and you're hanging on by a thread. By the grace of God, you're still alive. And you ask yourself this question. How would this have been possible without God in my life? Amen. Are you with me? Can you relate? You think, how, how, how do people do this if they do not have the power of Christ in them? How, how is it possible? And I have the answer for you this morning. It's not possible. It's, it's impossible. <laughs> that is why the uh, suicide rates are where they are. Amen? That is why uh, divorce rates are, are numbers that are where they are. That is why kids are taking their own lives. That is why primary school kids are in despair. Because it's not possible. Amen? But the good news is we know what the answer is. We have experienced his power. We have this treasure in us. And now after, after, <laughs> the Holy Spirit has convicted me. When I have a conversation like that again, the next step is to say, yes, it's, it's not possible. And that is why you and I, whoever I'm having that conversation with, is, that is why we have to share what we have. Because it's not possible to make it without the grace of God. Are you with me? So this great grace that we have received, this, this, all these truths that we have now uh, just um, touched on, there's so many more, these are not meant only for our survival. Amen? They are not meant, the power of God in our lives is not purely for us to survive until he comes, to get, uh, comes again. We are meant to just be a channel of what he's pouring into our lives, pouring it out again. And you know what? Often as believers, this, this is where it stops. We are, we're going through difficult things in life. We receive the grace of God. And that's amazing. And that's at the end of that. And you wonder, yes, we will reach eternity in one piece. <laughs> but that is not the purpose of God. That's not where the purpose of God ends. That's where only where it begins. Amen? So his plan is for us not to be only recipients of the grace that he gives us and the power and all these amazing things that we read about now, but for us to be a channel of that to the world that is in such desperate need. Because we cannot make it without His grace. Are you with me this morning? It's not just meant for us to make it and survive. I had a picture. Um, if you go to the next slide, I'll take you back to, back, back 
to back to the picture. So as we're praying this week, we're praying for some with some pastors for the pastor summit coming up in October. And I had a picture of um, of this maybe similar to this huge dam filled with the grace and the love and the power of God. And and we are the sluice gates. And I had this this impression that so many of the sluice gates that are meant to take this glorious grace to the dry land out there are either rusted or half shut or not opening well or just cl closed completely because we don't understand what our purpose is or we don't understand what our role is in this whole channel thing. Uh, and I had this image of uh, you know so many of the sluice gates not being fully open and, and the not being a channel of the, the rivers of living water. Amen. Um, we'll get back to that at the end, but I feel God is wanting to stir our hearts this morning with a passion not only to, to realize who He is in what we are facing, but also to take that next, those next steps and saying, this is not only for me. This hope that I have in my heart that gets me up in the morning, this hope that I have in my heart that doesn't, it makes me not give up on difficult situations in the relationships and work, etc. This, this life that I carry in me is not just for me. Are you with me? Amen. I want to look at us to look at this um, verse in Genesis chapter. Actually, okay, we can't read all of this now. This is too much. But Esther. Please go and read Esther. Amazing book. Interesting. God is not mentioned once in Esther. Huh? Go and check me up, please. Go and read all of it. A couple of chapters. Check me. Not even once. It's as if the right the reader is is invited to search for God in what is happening. Okay? So a very, very short version. Esther becomes queen. You can go read how. And uh, she's a Jew. And her uncle and her kind of working together. And he's, he hears of this plot to kill all the Jews. And there's this evil guy who wants to kill all the Jews in the country. Not good news, right? And uh, he, he manages to convince the, the king to make, an, to make a decree that all the, ki the Jews will be killed on a specific day. I don't know about you. We've faced some difficulties but we haven't faced something up to that level yet, right? <clears throat> so where there's already a law made, there's already a date set, this is the day where everybody's going to be killed. That's not good news, right? So they face calamity. So let me, maybe let me just read this next bit from Esther chapter 4. <coughs> okay, next one, next one. We're going to just read the bit here. The, um, okay. Then they told Mordecai, oh, Esther explains to Mordecai, listen, I can't just go and chat to the king. This doesn't work like that. I can get killed like that. You can't just go and say, how's it, king? Can we have a coffee? doesn't work like that, right? So if you just go into his presence without being called, then you might just die that day. So she just explains to him, this might mean I'm going to be killed. So, and this is his answer, and he says, uh, verse 13, then Mordecai told them to reply to Esther, do not think to yourself, that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. He knows the God that he serves. He says, listen, if it's not going to be through you, it's going to be through somebody else. Okay? <coughs> but you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go, gather all the Jews to be found in Susa, and hold a fast on my behalf. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. At least she's gathering the troops to cover her in prayer. Okay, good call. And, my, and I and my young women will also fast as you do. Then I will go to the king, though it is against the law, and if I perish, I perish. Mordecai then went away and did everything as Esther had ordered him. So she came to be content. With this is this is the reality of the situation. God is faithful. So she realizes that I might die, but this is what God, I need to do for the grace of God to flow through my life. 
for me to be a channel of the grace. It might cost me my life, <laughs> um, but she was content, like Paul was saying. She was content with this is the way it's going to be. And go and rest. You read the rest of the story. The, everything gets turned upside down. The Lord turns the whole of the situation up, upside down. And he comes through powerfully and delivers his people. But the point is that we are in a hostile place, it seems, spiritually. We are hostile. There's so much coming against us. But God has placed us here for a reason, for a time, right now. There's, a, there's, a, there's an election coming up next year. There's so much happening in our nation. And you and I have a decision to make. Am I going to be the one speaking life? Am I going to be the one channeling the grace of God? Or am I going to be the one surviving in my cupboard, hoping that I can live another day? Are you with me? Oh, am I going to, we've got some decisions to make. Am I going to be the one gr grumping and complaining along with the other guys there at the office? Or am I going to be the one saying, I'm going to pray for the situation that you're facing because I have a God that I trust in? Am I going to be the one to channel the grace of God through my life? Or am I going to be the one just surviving? Amen? All right, so I want to take us to Genesis chapter 12. We, we're almost finished. We, <laughs> the Lord says to Abram, The Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. He's calling him to move. And I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great. Why? So that you will be a blessing. Not for you to survive, Abraham. Not for you to have a great life. Not for you to have a hasty but when you retire one day. I will bless you that you will be a blessing. I will bless you. I will bless those who bless you, and I will um, and him who dishonors you, I will curse. So that's worth warning people that dis dishonoring you. And in all the families of the earth, uh, you, and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. We are called the, the, the children of Abram, all right? So he's the father of the faith. And this promise, I believe, is just as much applicable to you and I as it is to Abraham. He says, I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. We have been blessed and we have received grace and we have received so much so that others will be blessed through us, so that all the nations of the earth will be blessed through us. Amen. Christopher and them are now on Ireland and then going off to Somaliland where there's a family that they support, that when Shofar before, that before I felt the call to go minister in the most harshest of conditions that you can imagine. But they have caught something of this, that we have been blessed so that we can be a blessing. I'm not saying all run to Somali land, I'm not saying that, but ask this question, why have I been blessed? Why have I received this grace? Not just for me to survive. Not just for me to be able to retire comfortably. To be a blessing. It says, um, In you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And then finally, um, in terms of our confession, Proverbs eighteen twenty one, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Another whole sermon here. Just to say that so much of what I'm talking about today it's got to do with what is in our mouth. Amen? So much of what I'm talking about has got to do with what am I saying about my situation? What am I saying about our country? What am I confessing? Not confessing, not only thinking, yes, thinking what that's also important, what's in my heart, it's very important. <laughs> sort that out. But what am I saying? What am I prophesying over this stuff that we are facing? Amen. I have a choice to make. Those who love it will eat its fruit. So what fruit would you like? You can pick these on the menu. Death or life. Very short menu. Not so difficult. <laughs> and then, we like choices, don't we? Okay, there we go. 
we, we can eat the fruit, either death or life. But there's such power in what we say about our nation. Um, I was challenged this week, a uh, pastor's fraternal, the guy asked us, what is your picture, what is the picture in your mind, in your heart about of, 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 of South Africa, of our nation? And I thought for a bit, and I realized that since that time where the Lord called us to cy- cycle around our nation, that's many years ago now, that's a long time, in the 90s. Anyway, <laughs> we started in 99. Any guys, or... That was the first one. We cycled around the country and we prayed for the country for six weeks. And we did that a couple of times. I did it, I went along twice. And we prayed for every part of the country as we went around the borders. And I can still confess to you with boldness today that my thoughts and my heart about our country cannot be negative. Because I've experienced the heart of God in prayer for our nation. Yes, sometimes I get, I, I also get discouraged, don't, don't get me wrong, I also, but then I think of what God has said, I think of what he had us pray, and then suddenly my spirit cannot be negative, because of the power of the word and the purpose that he has spoken of our nation, amen, so that's just a tip, if you're struggling with negativity, come to intercession and, pr- and pray, amen, and experience the heart of God for our nation. Um, and then this lastly, yeah, this second Corinthians, we read it earlier, but I just want to add verse 7. We have this treasure, this grace, this glory, this power, and all of this that we've spoken about now. We have this treasure in jars of clay, in earthen vessels, to show that the surpassing power of all of this that we have received belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way. It goes on crushed, not, not crushed, perplexed, not driven to despair, persecuted, not forsaken, struck down, not destroyed, um, always carrying in, in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. So all of this that we've been speaking about now, we have it in earthen vessels, broken, cracked, not perfect, so that the power of God may be clearly not seen to be not of us. I mean, that this power that we have, this grace that we have, this glory that's in our lives, this peace that we have. Have you had that people asking you, how is it that you are still so peaceful while stuff is going so wrong in your life? I, you know, it's such a great moment to say, you know what, yes, things are going wrong, but uh, there's somebody with me in the boat that I need to introduce to you. We have this treasure in us, and it's not for us only. Amen? So as I, uh, as I was praying, uh, so I had this image, like I said, about the sluice gates, and I felt there's a couple of key things that are keeping, that are obstructing the sluice gates. Okay, one of them is the survival mode that I've been talking about. And to be honest, guys, this is the default if we're not very deliberately living differently, this is default for us as humans. Human beings is that we, we, we go towards how can I survive, okay? So let's make peace with that, but please don't stay there, okay? This it may be the default, but that just means I have to choose every day. I'm not going to go in survival mode. I'm going to live, and I'm going to let this thing, this glory go flow through my life to in every conversation and everything that I do in the way that I plan for my for for where I'm going in the way my family plans we're going to not go into the survival thing we're going to live that the glory of God may manifest through us amen as a church family same thing we're not going to live to survive and just make it we're going to go all out for the glory of God so that's the first thing is to to acknowledge if there's a bit of this survival mode that is entered, that is um, found, uh, taken root in our hearts. Amen. Secondly, fear is real, guys. How can I give something? How can I pour out something if I myself feel like I don't have enough? That's the that's the basic fear that we 
struggle with on a very deep level, not only in terms of substance, in terms of physical provision and finances and stuff like that, but also spiritually. How can I encourage somebody if I myself, I don't feel so encouraged like David earlier, you know, I don't feel so, I feel like a worm maybe today. How can I encourage somebody? I mean, isn't that something we wrestle with? You know, I was telling the guys last week at Encounter, okay, okay, almost finished, um, <clears throat> about the first, one of the first times that the Lord showed me this, as I was sitting here, not far here in uh, Limit Road, after a day, I was, I was first year engineering, um, long day in class, half past f- seven to half past four, solid classes, and we had something over lunch as well, so I didn't even eat, I was hungry, very, almost hangry, hangry, hungry, any case, and I was sitting there with my bruki, my little sandwich, and I was just ready to enjoy this. I was waiting for my sister to pick me up. And it's a very simple, very silly example, but it just uh, spoke to me so powerfully as a young believer. And the Lord said to me, give this bruiki, give this sandwich to this person next to you there at the bus stop who clearly needed it much more than I did. And that was hard for me because I was in such a need myself. Are you with me? So I was already going like this because of low blood sugar, you know, and looking forward to sorting out the situation. And, and that is the crisis we face so often. I need this thing. I cannot give it because I need it for myself, my own family. We have needs. I cannot give my time because I need it for myself. Okay? That's not a bad thing. It's just reality. But the kingdom works other, differently. And it was such a simple thing. And the Holy Spirit said, give it to the person. And then I said, okay, give it my bruki. And I gave my bruki. Okay? Um, a few minutes later, my sister arrived and picked me up, and she just visited some family friends, and they were having pancakes, and they sent a bunch of pancakes for me. Hallelujah. The point is, <laughs> this is the, such a crucial part of the fear that we face every day. I don't have sufficient for myself, so I'm hanging on for dear life. So that's fear-based. That's fear-based because it says, God, uh, I can't get let, get, I can't let go of this because I'm not sure when the, the f- next provision will come, whether it be encouragement or physical provision or finance, whatever. I mean, that's why we struggle. But I want to speak, I want to release just power and faith over us as a church family this morning that we would operate differently, that we would live with open hands. And then when God tells us to give or to encourage or to, to share or to bless or to serve that we would do it with open hearts knowing that the pancakes are already on the way amen that when i was giving that little sandwich the the better the blessing the pancakes were already in the car on the way are you with me um and then along with that there's another one is apathy and a place where we've been so when we're so focused on this stuff that i I'm facing that we struggle to lift our head. He's the lifter of our heads. And that apathy and that self-focusedness is also part of the default. I mean, and we're going to pray about that this morning. All right, let's stand, please, this morning. <coughs> oh, so, guys, this is not about condemnation. This is... I'm preaching at myself just as much as I'm preaching at anybody else. But I'm challenged this morning that, that what God has poured out through the death of His Son and through the power of His Spirit, the treasure that we have received of who He is in our lives, is not just for our survival. It's not just for us. And I'm not only talking about hope for eternity, because yes, that is important. That's what we've been talking about. How do we share Jesus with people? How do we share Christ? How would you share the love of Christ in a way that that will bring souls into the kingdom? I mean, that's part of it, and that's part of what I'm saying this morning, but not only for eternity, but also for right now. Yes, hope for eternity, that's the first and most important one. Salvation, 
But the hope and the glory and the provision that God has for us is for right now just as much as it is for eternity. It looks a little bit different maybe sometimes. So I'm talking about making a decision to recognize what's the stuff that's making my sluice gate not open? <laughs> Why is it rusted closed? What, what are the blockages? Is it fear? Is it survival mode? Is it apathy? What is it? And then saying, Lord, deliver me and open up this gate that your glory and your power and your love and your grace will flow through my life and my family's life and us as a church family. Amen. Asking, Lord, what is it? What, is the, what are those things that got me stuck? Deliver me. Deliver us. Amen. So that the floodgates will be open. So that His glory will flow. Father, we bring our hearts before you this morning. We thank you, Jesus, for this, this truth of who you are. All these truths that we read this morning, your glory, your power, your strength made perfect, your comfort, your provision, your peace. You are the Prince of Peace, God. You are the one that calms the storms. Lord, all of these truths, Lord, we thank you that we have received them. And we can look back over our lives and we can testify of all the but God moments. We can testify that if it was not for your grace, we would not be here right now. We'd probably be dead. <laughs> but God, this morning, we are convicted, Lord, that sometimes we have not opened the gates. We've not let the rivers of water flow. So we repent this morning. If that's in your heart this morning, you're convicted, just take a moment to repent. Say, Lord, I, I'm sorry, God. We're sorry, Lord, that we have often gone into survival mode. We've often gone into fear of lack mode. We've often gone into apathy mode or focusing on self mode and hanging on to the bits that we have. It's just with everything we got hanging on, Lord, we just we ask that you would forgive us. So forgive me, Lord, in Jesus' name. We choose today to open our hands, open our hearts in the name of Jesus. We choose today, Lord, to step away from fear into faith again, Lord. We step away from survival mode into overcoming mode lord over glorious living mode in jesus we step away into a different way of thinking and living god in the name of jesus we step away from apathy into urgency for souls and for your kingdom to come in jesus name and we ask holy spirit even as the apostles prayed after the persecution began, they said, Lord, that you might fill us with a greater boldness, that we might share your gospel with boldness. They didn't say, Lord, that you would save us from persecution. They said, Lord, fill us with greater boldness. And this morning we boldly come and we say, God, by your Spirit, fill us with great boldness, Lord. In the name of Jesus, fill us with your spirit afresh and anew this morning in the name of Jesus. Fill us to overflowing, Lord. Deliver us from fear in the name of Jesus. Deliver us from the survival mode in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs>